Hi everybody, my name is Bobby Woods and I got a whole lot of things to tell you. I came here from America and I've been living in a place called Cradley Heat for the past 20 years. Had no idea of the things that's been happening here since back in the 1600s. Behind me is an assuming, an unassuming little pub called the Wagon and Horses. Well, let me tell you something. Behind that place, a man called Dud Dudley started, if you like, the Industrial Revolution and started smelting iron 50 years before it was really recognized. And somebody else, the guy who did the Iron Bridge, got credit for this thing. So take a walk with me. Let me show you what's going on down in the mighty little place where I call home right now. I'm standing here where the Black Brook meets the Stowell. And right there by that tree is the boundary of Cradley Heath. Now, on this site, back in the 1600s, is where a man called Dud Dudley had a factory. And in that factory, he produced the first pig iron by using coal. And if you like, we could say this very spot right here represents the start of the Industrial Revolution anywhere in the world, right here in a place called the Black Country. Cradley Forge was a water-powered forge producing iron, which was slit and worked into roads for making chains and nails and is first recorded in 1610 but could have existed the same time before from about 1619. This man smelted iron using coal instead of your usual charcoal. This occurred about 1620, almost 90 years before it was achieved by Abraham Darby uh, the Colebrookdale in Shropshire. So this place has been doing, it's been responsible for the creation the, of the Industrial Revolution right here where we're standing. Man, ain't that something? I'm gone. We just left the Stour and we're going back up to the Black Brook and the Mouse Sweet Brook. And as you can see behind me right there is the culvert where Dud Dudley's dam was situated right there in the background of all of this. Back in the day, there's a dude out there called Dud Dudley who dammed off this whole damn area because he wanted to power his water wheel for his factory. Now this was all on the water back in the 1700s. They had boats and everything on it. And let me tell you right now in the area, this was called a new pool, by the way. And the housing estate across to my right is still called new pool today. This area right where I'm standing is called the pipes. The reason for that is about 300 meters up the road there in the corner, there used to be a very large factory. And they would repair gas pipes, steel pipes, water pipes for the mains and all the kind of industries that would have happened here locally. Man, let me tell you something. See behind me here in the playground now? What used to happen is they would stack the pipes up right here, getting ready to be reconditioned, to be used again and stuff like that. And they would stack like, like, a, like a four or five story house, you know, 10, 12, uh, pipes high. They were quite large. Kids could crawl inside of them. What happens is kids used to use them as a playground. They had no toys. There were no, no playground that they got right now. And up until this day, this area is called the pipes. Ain't that something? Let me tell you, man. Follow me through. This is the other corner of Cradley Heath. Now, down here where I'm standing with my back against the wall is the confluence. Let me turn around and show you this thing. The confluence of the Mouse Sweet Brook and the Black Brook. And I can hear the beautiful clear water flowing in the background of all of this wonderful greenery. Man, have I got things to talk to you about in Cradley Heath? Come on.
follow me through to the next corner and we'll catch up over there. Y'all ready? Come on. Behind me right across there, is New Pool Road. Now down that road was a lot of train tracks that went right across the road, straight in front of me across into the goods yard. Now a whole lot of metal was transported, pipes into the goods yard stacked across those things. At that time when that was happening, there was no barriers. And this would have happened like 24 hours a day. It was a constant noise up in Cradley Heath. And that kept it going until 1960. It ain't that long ago when this was a very noisy place. Man, I'm going in the shade for a little bit. We walk up the road a little ways and we've come across a building behind me. You can probably see that in the shot behind me. And that, was, that building was used to house Midland Red buses up until the late 70s, stuff like that. And that building is now used for something else. Really neat. I'm going to show you a building that's been here for a long time. Now, they want a Navy contract. Now, it looks very unassuming, but I can tell you that in that building that you can see, the top line out right now, all the chains that was on the ship, anywhere in the world, would have been made, probably made right there in that building. Yeah, I'm right here. I'm on the platform of uh, Cradle Heath Station. This was built in the, the 1800s. And this, this station here, that line, you can see the train coming up in the background. This would have linked uh, Mid-City Birmingham and that way to Kidderminster, responsible for connecting the whole of the black country. So this is history, y'all. This is history. Behind me is a building called William Griffiths. This building right here, this company made chains for the Royal Navies and they're on ship. The chains that were on every ship all over the world, even to right now in 2021, there are ships carrying chains that was made in this factory. Back in, I'm standing in front of a building right here. See this old door behind me? Really looks cool. Up until the 1800s, back in the day, they made chains. There was at least a hundred chain makers working in this building making chains by hand. You can imagine the heat, there was no air condition. You can imagine the working condition that they would have had. And these chains went to every part of the world from this place, right here in Cradley Heath. Over the road is a building, Ernie Stevens made enamel wear, which they called judge wear back in the day. And this kind of enamel mugs and cups and bits and pieces, plates and stuff like that went all over the world. All of that coming out of Cradley Heath. Man, things, so many things happen down here. This is Woods Lane, a factory complex. And behind me, the series of buildings, a whole lot of factories up here in the day. And uh, these are the remaining few that are left. They're being knocked down today to make room for brand new houses, which you can probably see in the back of me right here. But this is just a part of the disappearing history that happened around here. We're now coming from, we're following the style coming from Dudley's factory, underneath the bridge, going up to the British Iron Works across there, onto this new factory complex where new houses are being built and the old factories that made the chains and stuff like that are now being demolished for a brand new neighborhood. Moving along with history, thank you. I'm here on Wood Lane, at the end of Wood Lane, and behind me has to be one of the oldest buildings in Cradley Heath. I mean, look at the old brickwork, look at the ceiling what it looks like. This will replace my new houses. Yeah, this is Bobby Woods coming out of Woods Lane. And they named this place after me because they knew one day this boy was gonna come down here and do this documentary. Ain't that something? This is also the side of a factory. Hold tight and as I press in, and they used to make chains. And I keep on talking that I will be talking something, saying something special about chains. On the, across this railway bridge here, took a lot of the materials in and out of Cravey Heat over that particular time. And underneath it follows the Cradley Road right up onto a place called Five Ways where the church used to be. And, I, and I'm into going to church, so I thought I'd talk to you about that. See ya.
John, you, you're going to tell me about what happened here? Yeah. I've just met John, John Bills, who, who still works here in the Honda TN. He's going to tell you what happened in the building back there, because yeah. he knows better. Yes, we've been here 100 years now, and 50, 60 years ago, we were manufacturing by hand anchors, chains, blacksmiths. There was probably 40 blacksmiths working here in them days. Wow. We're still making chain to this day, which is used in the galvanizing plants. Right. Grade 40 chain. And we make big rings, links, special U bends. So it's still going on, old fashioned hard work. Yeah, and, and I, I thought like this was like over, like uh, the last time was like 100 years ago. I didn't realize that today in 2021, you're still doing that. Yeah. So how long How long have you as, uh, well, worked I, here? As, as I'm a... 60 now, I've been coming here since I was nine. Wow. That's and, a... and we used to work on the little furnaces and join chain. Well, from that age? Ten, yeah, yeah. Really, at 10 yeah, years yeah, old you yeah, were working? Yeah. Yeah, I came in the school holiday. Sure. Yeah. But even so, I mean, that's a. This is like heavy work for back then. Uh, yeah, but obviously you did what accordingly you could lift smaller chain. Yeah, yeah. Because chain can be yeah. six mil in diameter up to three inches in diameter. This is fantastic. This is fan this helps to preserve the history of what's yeah. going on. You're a part we're, of this. We're, the only problem is we're we're about to move. I hear. So where are you guys going to go? We're going not far away, but mm -hmm. because this has been designated for yeah for houses now. Houses, yeah. yeah, it's great. This building behind me is a pub called the Cross Guns. The landlord of it was Joe Mullen, who used to run it and have dog fights in the bottom because he used to own terriers, and they would get together and spend a lot of people's money down there with fighting dogs. This row of shops behind me was uh, a vibrant part of the community back then. There was chemists, there was butchers, and the pubs. And a lot of the people would have shopped here back in the day. And then probably step out and go have some, a beer or two in the cross guns down the road before they had a dog fight. This is the famous corner called Five Ways. Now across there was a place called Charlie Wright's. And right here behind me is a building standing that would have belonged to a company that makes suits, a company called Burton's back in the day. Now five ways from here would lead up to four ways, and that is the high street of Cradley, which is only about a couple hundred meters long. This is Granger's Lane, which would have led down to Congreve Trading Estate at that time. And there was a cycle shop right here in that corner. This is the famous Cradley High Street. Now you can't see it, but in the middle of this, there was tram lines. And the tram would have run right down to the bottom of Cradley Road up until the 1900s. 